This podcast is a member of the Place to Be Nation family. Visit us at placetobenation.com, the only place to be in your pop culture world. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Place to Be Nation Sports Network. 2.0. 2.0. I was told 2.0 is a big deal. This is the Cowboy, Roger Morissette. Have uh, John D'Amato on the line. How you doing, John? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, 2.0 it is. Uh, 2.0. For obvious, for obvious reasons, uh, that's why you brought me in. Uh, I'm, I'm carrying 2.0. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a large 2.0, though. So... <laughs> Just have to catch it, you know. The light hits it the right way. Two point it is. Um, the two clients. <laughs> so, it's a um, our weekly football show that we're going to do. We're, we're we're I call it weekly. I, I I'm going to make every effort. John and I are going to make every effort to do this weekly. So this is a follow up to a- our to our big NFL preview that we did with Nick Duke. Um, Nick couldn't make it tonight, so you just have have John and the Cowboy. Which that's a lot of pressure. That's like a job uh, to show up to uh, once a week. I don't know if I can handle that, but uh, we'll, we'll do our best. To... We'll, we'll do our best. I like. I hate to. I hate to overpromise and underdeliver. So that's why I said hopefully weekly, definitely monthly. I think I can commit to monthly. How about you, John? Oh yeah, o- overpromise and underdeliver once again. Uh, you brought the right guy on. That's the, <laughs> the, the story of my life. <laughs> But yeah, we had a uh, re- real exciting first week of the NFL. So, uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to we're going to go over the games, and then we're going to take a look at, at week two. Starting, uh, so we're taping this on Wednesday night. We're about a little little more than a little under twenty four hours out from the big Thursday night game. I guess kind of put that in quotation marks with uh, Ravens Bengals. They're both one and zero. So, <laughs> battle of undefeateds. But let's take a look back at the week that was. So we started things out Thursday, Thursday's game. You know, I think we, I think we could spend the whole episode talking about Thursday's game, John. But um, uh, definitely. Why don't you give me your takeaways first, and I'll uh, I'll chime in with any uh, any any ridiculous thoughts. Well, first of all, without uh, jumping on uh, a- any team and uh, the personnel and uh, shitting on the offensive coordinator, which uh, I'm sure I'm sure will happen uh, later but uh just uh, the uh the, w- the way the nfl is set up now where where nobody plays in the preseason anymore and you could tell by, by this first week especially this first game where just uh guys are rusty and uh teams are sloppy there was uh i think there was 26 penalties total uh, and um uh, there, there was a you, you see, you saw some uh, strange things like Zach Ertz dropping two balls. I, I haven't seen the guy drop two balls in, in, since he's been in the league. So, just a, a lot, a lot of the, uh, the the new age preseason where nobody plays anymore. It, it really taking us toll. Where, where where guys are real rusty, and uh, it was there was definitely a lack of quality of play. As a matter of fact, uh, the second quarter, and also due to the late start with the Lightning, the second quarter. Uh, the, the Mr. Sandman was already kicking my ass. I had uh, to take a little snooze in the second quarter. Luckily, I woke up for the second half. But uh, and, but uh, it, they they pulled it out at the end. It was it was a a, a very good fourth quarter. It was very competitive and a, a great finish. A lot of twists and turns and um, and, a, and a great finish there. Dramatic finish. The game. I mean, this game was pretty difficult to watch. I thought, especially and, and I think you kind of kind of hit on it, John. With you know the the, the teams looked. Looked rusty. The Eagles' offense looked awful with Foles. Like I mean, if you, they're not going to be able to win a lot of games. I don't think with that guy playing quarterback. I mean, then you know the Falcons. We we talked him up last week. I think all three of us were were pretty high on them, and it was just it was just so discouraging to see the same same issues that they had last year, like the exact same issues that they had last year, just rear their ugly head again with, you know, I think it was, it was um, pretty poetic that they lost the game inside the 10 yard line again. Um, 
no, the really bad red zone offense. I, I don't know what's going on there, but they they have to fix it because it's the worst red zone offense I've ever seen. So it certainly didn't look like a battle of two of the NFC's best teams. But we'll chalk, chalk it up a little bit to Rust and uh, Carson Wentz not playing. And, you know, the Falcons really need to figure something out. Um, you can't – with their defense, especially they lost – Nick's, uh, Nick's, predi- <laughs> Nick's defensive MVP of the NFL, Deion Jones, is now done for at least six weeks, right? They put him on I, on the, on IR. And they lost, uh, Keanu Neal. So with that defense, uh, field goals aren't going to get it done. So for them to make good on our, our playoff prediction, they have to figure out how to score some touchdowns. Yeah, you're always going to get uh, debilitating injuries, and uh, and sometimes it's better that you, you get in the first week so they could they could jump on a uh, replacement right away. Uh, Eric Reed is still out there uh, if they want to deal with the the, the political stuff, uh, but which uh, we don't talk about on this show. We keep it. Uh, we, we we talk about the action that happens after the national anthem, not the stuff before and during. So th- th- that's like a name out there that they could uh, they could sign. So. There's always going to be injuries. You, you, you got to deal with it. You can't use that as an excuse. But but already you, you see the, the Falcons' uh, Twitter. Uh, their, their fans are already calling for the head of the uh, the offensive coordinator. And, uh, Sark. I, I mean, yeah, that that has a lot to do with it. But but I, I hate when uh, when you lose a tough game and uh, and and fans want, want to just point to one thing, saying, "Oh, if uh, we just have a better offensive coordinator, we'll win the game." Or, or just uh, as as we'll go over the games later. Uh, the fans just like to point to, to one uh, player, like whether if it's a left, left tackle or something. It's a uh, to, to lose a football game. There's about ten or fifteen uh, key players, and uh, there's a lot of things. But but I don't I don't think you're giving the the Eagles. You're down on the Eagles. I don't think you give them enough credit. Their defense, their defensive front four, and, and plus they 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 roll in guys. They they signed uh, Haloti Nada and uh, Michael Bennett as just an addition, and they already had one of the best. Uh, front fours in the league. So I, I really don't think you're giving them enough credit as a dominant oh. uh, force. Uh, they, 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 they're a very good defense. They're a very, very good defense. And any negativity toward the Eagles was, was based on their 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 offense, which was unwatchable. Sure, but 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 even that that they uh they roll uh, they roll uh, three quality running backs. Uh, they they pretty much uh can keep a dry uh, under wraps, and then they bust him out in the fourth quarter when everybody's tied, and and, and he's he's like a freight train rolling through it. And uh, Clement is a quality back, so oh yeah. They, they, I mean, they, they, still really... have, they still have talent around Foles. You know? Yeah, and I mean, it's just they're um you know they they when they get Wentz back and Jeffrey back, that'll be the real you know the real Eagles team. Sure, but he, even without him, I, to get the I win, mean, I week, mean, they, this, a win's this a week win. they got a soft. They got a soft uh, Tampa game this this week, so I, I think you'll see improvement out of the out of uh, their offense falls. And and, and like I, I said before, when do you see Zach Ertz drop two passes? Uh, you know, I haven't seen him drop like one in, in years. So. He certainly didn't drop the game winning pass in the Super Bowl, John. He certainly didn't drop that. So. All right, I, let's get over it, Roger. So uh, <laughs> you got your five, you got your five rings. You know, you guys want to be greedy. You can't win every year. Let's, it's true. Uh, let's try it's to get true. past it. All right, moving on. So from, so so John thought that game was a little less ugly than I did. I thought the game was ugly. So moving, um, moving no, on from the first three quarters. I, I thought the, the the fourth quarter, like any game, could be saved with a with a, with a last uh, few minutes where the lead goes back and forth and it comes down to the end. So I have a soft spot for any any game that, that comes down to the end. And, then, and you know, it was exciting. Not to belabor the point, I, I have never been more sure of anything than I was that they were not going to get a touchdown at the end. <laughs> Once their best chance was when Julio caught the uh, the long one and the guy tackled him, you know, at the uh, around his ankles. At yeah, about, next at about time the we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to question uh, wh- uh, why they just abandoned the the running game. Uh, they they have Freeman and Coleman, and they, well, they, Freeman they, was uh, dinged. Freeman got hurt. Yeah. But Coleman looked good, and um, I mean, at the beginning of the game, they they ran it to Freeman three times and threw it to him once from the two yard line and didn't get in. So they were trying something different. They really abandoned the running game, it was, but it was like I said, we could do a whole we could we could do a whole show on that. So the, the, uh, the Falcons lost the game at the beginning. I mean, they dominated the first quarter of that game, and to 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 
to walk away. It was only 6-3, yeah. Yeah, 6-3 yeah, three, three, three or 3 and nothing. I mean, it's just it, – they, they should have been up 17 to nothing. And, and, and yeah, you're bringing up more layers. So when, it, when it's 0-0 zero, zero and, and, and you go down there, you, you just got to get points on the board. You got to get the zero off the board there. Uh, uh, Quinn is is, is already um, got in his head about last year, and and he he went for it uh, on zero zero. He he went for the touchdown. Just just get the three points. I'm I'm always in favor of getting the zero off the board first, and then later on you can get risky with the you know we're on on your fourth and twos. But well, especially when it looked like it's not like they were getting close. Like I mean, they just got stuffed. So I'm with you. Yeah. They should have taken three there, but woulda coulda shoulda. Yep. All right, so from bad to worse, Steelers Browns. So the Browns, um, the Browns improve upon last year's record, do something they did not do all of last season, and that's not lose. Um, they're undefeated. They're, they're undefeated. Ugly game, ugly and exciting. It was it was exciting, but it was again an, an ugly game. I thought somehow I, I thought both both teams kind of underperformed. From the, the Browns had some hype, and you would have thought that if the Steelers would have come into Cleveland and play the way they did, that the Browns would win the game. I mean, the Steelers did everything they possibly could to give it to them. Um, how much do you think the, Steel, the Steelers missed Bell? I, I have a take on this, but we'll get yours. Uh, Connor really, just heard him with that big fumble, uh, but, but but then again, there was a they had a shitload of turnovers, but. Uh, but otherwise, Connor was solid. Uh, uh, so the, uh, this game was uh, mo- mostly the, the turnovers that did them in. So they, didn't, they didn't really miss, miss them this game, but uh, they, they will eventually if this whole doc continues. But, but, but Connor filled the night. So other than that, that, that fumble, he, uh, he had a quality game. He played great. I thought, you know, I think they missed him more. Just the, I think the distraction that they, they, they just did not seem in sync kind of the whole game long and, I think the the coaches have, um, you know, Tom when and they haven't done a real good job of of keeping the distraction down. Like if they, again, not not to talk about the Pats, and it's not just the Pats, but most organizations, if a guy doesn't report, you know, the 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 words you're getting are, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go out there there with the guys we have, and you essentially they'll act like the guy doesn't exist, right? If he's not with the team, he's not part of the yeah. team, and that's that. Especially that's usually like an unwritten rule in a locker room. You don't talk about another guy's money because uh, eventually you're going to come up for uh, uh, contract negotiations and you don't want guys to talking shit about, you know, you know what you're making. So the, they, they kind of, uh, they kind of went against that. A few guys that definitely uh, crapped on Bell. So yeah. They, and then, and then Brown, Brown came out and defended Bell and Tomlin talked about Bell. You know, I mean, uh, they're a good but team without the, him. I mean, it's just, like I, if anything, they're they're emboldening and emboldening him to thinking he's more important than he is because they can't stop talking about him even though he's not there. But that's kind of been the culture that, uh, and he's been getting some criticism now that he of, that Tomlin created there, where guys, you know, Antonio Brown sometimes uh, goes off at the at the mouth and is a little hard to control. So that's the kind of culture that he's created over there. Hey, hey, they're up there every year. They're contending and they're in the playoffs, so you can't knock them, but. The, the those that say that, that criticize him for you know, not winning the Super Bowl the past few years that, that that's something they always jump on. Yeah, and I think it's a I think it's valid. The um, with that said, I don't know about you. I'm not too worried about them. I mean, I, I think some of this is rust. Some of it was Bell not being there. Some of it's Roethlisberger on the road. He's just for whatever reason he's not the same guy on the road as he is as he is at yeah, home. It's been kind of fluky how the Browns came back at the end. I think. Um, Let's give credit to Miles Garrett, though. What a beast! Bro. Oh, he's a stud. He, he, yeah, he looks like he could be uh, make a defensive player of the year run. If he keeps playing like that, the Browns he's going to give the Browns a chance to uh, actually win a few games. Oh man, I mean, yeah. With all that said, that the Steelers didn't play well, the Browns, while you know not looking like a, like a division winner or anything, they did look better. Tyrod did not look better. Tyrod had an awful game. Um, no, I, yeah, with, with a couple uh, more throws, uh, they could have got the W. Uh, I, I think he, like he, one he more. He runs game. the scrambles. Well, his yeah, his, his co- big calling card is supposed to be you know he's accurate and doesn't make mistakes, right? What was he fifteen for forty or something like that? And uh, well, he doesn't turn the ball over, but uh, yeah, he he throws a pretty deep ball, but but sometimes like a, a simple like 
seven yard out, he's just he's very inaccurate on on the, on the short passes. Yeah, and he I mean he does give you stuff with his legs, but I think one more game like that, and I think May I I think they almost have to give Mayfield a shot if Tyrod's not playing well. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they they figure this this season's a, it's a wash, and then they don't want to get Mayfield just killed right yet. They're, they'll they'll have him ready for the. The, the the back half of the season, they're, they're, they're going to be patient on that. But uh, also last week you crapped on uh, Hugh Jackson, and uh, unfortunately, it, even in a tie, is well deserved. <laughs> I mean, they had they had the game right on their hands when they uh, they picked off or the fumble, whatever you want to call it, and then they return it to the ten. And in Browns fashion, they get a they get a penalty that moves them back, and they have no timeout, so they have a chance to run one play in the. Uh, you know, Jackson's brilliance that they run a play and they, and they go back about two, three more yards, which they didn't really afford to do, making the field goal even harder. It's just like, it's just like some coaches, they're, they're good motivators and, uh, they keep the locker room together and maybe, maybe he's good with the discipline problems. But when, when it comes to game management, there's, there's just some coaches that, that just don't have it. And, and yeah, and you could tell that, that, that if you keep it close, uh, Hugh is gonna, it's gonna blow it. <laughs> I mean, his one, his win loss record speaks for itself. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like um, Bill Parcell says, you are what your record is. You are what your record says you are. Next up, I mean, we get a couple here that we can kind of touch on lightly. Bengals, Colts. Um, couple takeaways. I thought, you know, I, I did predict that the Bengals would be better than people thought, and um, they they looked good. It was a good road win for them. Um, Luck looked like he was looked. You know, he's a little rusty, but. It, all in all, he did look like himself. So the the NFL's better when Andrew Luck's in it. But I think what what you guys mentioned about the rest of the Colts roster being being terrible, <laughs> particularly their defense, uh, that also rang true. So I think the takeaways here are may, may, maybe the Bengals are a little uh, maybe a little feisty this year, and uh, it's good to have Andrew Luck back. But the Colts probably aren't going anywhere. Yeah, also, also the the Bengals uh, have some playmakers on defense. Uh, that kid uh, made that last play. That kid Fedula made that last play where he stripped the guy and he scooped it up and and took it for uh, and took it to the house. That was a uh, that was some play for uh, he was he's like a six round uh, draft pick. So that was a heck of a play. A, yeah, so I was I was impressed with the with the Bengals uh, on the road. Uh, I mean Dalton is what he is. I, I don't think think he's as terrible as. Uh, you guys say he is, he's, but he, he does make, make like one or two passes each game. Uh, of course, I think it was his first pass of the, the game that uh, went for went for a pick. So he he has those he has those horrible passes, but but overall, he's not as bad as uh, as you guys make him out to be. No, I I mean, no need to lump me in there, John. I predicted the Bengals to make the playoffs. The uh... <laughs> Mixon. Well, it's only one game. It's only one game. Don't pat yourself on the back yet. But, uh, yeah, Joe Mixon it, it, looked it really good too. And if he if he can take a step forward, um, they that they have a lot of weapons on offense because John Ross caught a touchdown too. So I mean they're 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 rolling out uh, a bunch I, of first round picks. And not only that, this week uh, they got the they got the Ravens and they pretty much have the Ravens number. So it, once you get off the two and zero, uh, you could you could roll from there. Anything could happen. Absolutely. Uh, the next game I thought was the worst game of the of the, of the weekend: Titans Dolphins. Between all the delays and then just the oh, did it end yet? Did it end just, yet? Yeah, the, the, ter- still... the, the terrible play <laughs> on the field. Um, I mean, the Dolphins win this one. The Titans, we, I mean, us and others kind of talked about them like they could could have a uh, could have a contending team this year, and I mean, they really looked bad. I mean, I thought they looked yeah. just awful. Um, that, that again, one game a, doesn't make a season, but they have some they have some work to do. That's a tough spot with the uh, with the delays for for a coach coaching his first game, and uh, as we saw with all the coaches, uh, no coach coaching that first game won. They all uh, pretty much uh, struggled, and, and some struggled uh, badly, as we'll uh, we'll get to. But that's that's a tough uh, spot there. We have to have to have your guys uh, delayed for hours like that. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll give Rice uh, Mulligan on that one. Yeah, I mean, it's to your point, having two just like three or four hour, whatever they were, delays in the middle of the game is just kind of throws you all off, throws you all off. But so I don't have a whole lot there. I think, you know, my my opinion of uh, the Dolphins did not particularly change with that win. And um, 
the Titans were disappointing, but give them a From what little I saw, it is that the, the Dolphins uh, ran the ball well. Their, uh, their offensive line uh, might, might keep them in some games. So. Yeah, and I mean, we'll Tannehill keep an eye, actually. We'll keep an eye on them. Tannehill actually played pretty well, too, which is a, probably a, a complete aberration, but we'll see. Yeah. When you get off a solid offensive line play, uh, that, that can make any quarterback. That's true. Play. 49ers Vikings. So uh, Jimmy G takes his first, I believe that's his first loss as a starting quarterback in the NFL. He uh, he threw three three picks, I believe. Vikings are tough. Twenty four sixteen. I mean, I I, yeah. I I caught a lot of this game. I thought I thought the Vikings played well. Um, the Niners, I think. It's kind of tough to gauge, right? So if the Vikings are, are really loaded, then the Niners looked pretty good <laughs> because they're in Minnesota. They kept the game close. They had chances to tie. Um, Jimmy G can play better than that. I mean, that's a, he, had a, he had a bad game. Cousins looked good in his first uh, – first, he looked like an upgrade on Keenum. But – Vikings did have the even though I think we at least I <laughs> didn't think that they were uh, they that they might I thought they may take a step back this year. They watching the game they really did have the look of a of a division winner, playoff contender, stud team. I don't know if that's what you that, that, that it's it's one game, but that that's a tough spot for Jimmy G. Their their, their defense uh, looked dominant and. Uh, but but then again, he he, he threw one horrific uh, pass that went for a pick six that that kind of showed everybody, hey, let's maybe pump the brakes uh, before putting him in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I mean, they already gave him after five games. They already gave him his uh, twenty whatever the fuck million uh, contract. So he, he he threw he threw a horrific uh, pick six. But then, but then he made up for it with third in the comeback where where he he threw a beautiful Montana like where he was rolling to his left and uh, he he threw a perfect dart in the end zone. Uh, and like you said, he kept them in the game, and so even with three picks, and uh, they still only lost uh, by one score. Yeah, yeah, and that was that was a great touchdown pass. The Dante Pettis, of the rookie receiver, they have um, that was a great catch by him too. Yeah, but he needs more weapons. I, like I think uh, did Goodwin even play? Uh, he got he hurt. Got, like shut out. Goodwin. Oh, okay. Goodwin got hurt right at the beginning of the game. Yeah, that um, hurt him. Yeah, Garcon. Jimmy G and Garcon haven't had the best chemistry for whatever yeah, reason. Garcon's a good uh, number two, number three receiver, but he's not going to be a – if he's your number one, you're not, you know, you're going to yeah, struggle. Yeah, really, the, their number one option in the passing game was uh, was Kittle. It's, it's, Kittle made a bunch of nice plays. He looked – I mean, Jimmy right. G, if he likes the tight end, Kittle could be a nice little uh, – nice sleeper as a, as a good tight end in the league. Yep. All right, moving right along, Pats, Texans. So, I mean, in retrospect, this probably went the way we we should have seen it going. Watson's not a rookie, but he might as well be a rookie, right, which is fifth or, fifth or sixth career star. Belichick's always kind of eating up young quarterbacks. Texans coming into into New England. Pats looked, Pats looked good. Gronk looked good. I don't think this is an indictment on the Texans. I mean, Watson really looked bad, but I think you can chalk some of that up to uh, to, to Belichick's scheme and um, the Pats' improved defense. But I, I still think the Texans are a good team. I don't think this is a, a total indictment on them as a as a as a horrible team or anything. It's just a, you know going to New England first week of the season is, is a tough spot. Yeah, you can't get much rougher draw than that. But uh, but Watson, it was like night and day from uh, last year. He really put on a show in, uh, in New England. But but then again, that's uh, it goes back to what we were talking about. That's uh, that's just rust. Uh, he hasn't played. He was he was hurt, and he, he barely and from barely playing in the preseason. So he'll he'll get better. Uh, that's uh, in, in a way for the for the Texans. That that's it's good to get the Pats out week one out the way, and then they can move on to uh, some some winnable games. But that's a rough draw. With all the guys coming back from injury, I, I don't think they they expected to, to go in and get a W. I, I did see a lot of people pick them, but uh, I, I, I wasn't uh, expecting Craziness. that. And, Craziness. And they, right and they kept there. it close. Well, they they kept it close. Yeah. You know, people are drawn back where the, where the Pats lost a, a couple openers. So. But it's mostly hatred. Uh, hatred's mm-hmm. hoping that. Don't we uh, know it? Don't we know it, Jim? <laughs> 
Next up, our big um, shock, big shock of the weekend. Fitz Magic, baby. Fitz Magic. The New Orleans defense was Fitz Tragic. Jesus. Yeah, so I think we, we talked about this on our preview show that on paper, New Orleans looked, looks, and, and I mean, they're, they're, on paper, they're, they're a great team. And then, I mean, their offense played great. But, yeah, yeah, no, we talked about it, but uh, they made me look bad because I was uh, hyping up the, their defense. I was saying that there wasn't the same old Saints of the past. How soft they were—they weren't the same soft Saints, and uh, they go out and they throw and they throw this up there. So that was a disappointment. There was a worry, right? There was a worry that there would be some some kind of hangover just from the way that they lost that game, right? The way that they lost to the Vikings. Such an awful, awful way to lose in the, in the playoffs, and. Yep. That defense just came out. I mean, that looked. I mean, like like you said, the old Saints, where every game was like this. That's what that defense looked like. I mean, Fitzpatrick played well, but I mean, guys are just running free all over the place. I mean, Deshaun Jackson, they let him get loose twice. I mean, Marshawn Lattimore had Evans, who's not even like a real burner, run right by him on a on a long touchdown. So I guess it can go one of two ways from here. This could be a huge wake-up call for the Saints D, and they could get it together right away, immediately. Or it could be a harbinger of uh, of bad things to come. I, I would lean toward lean toward the wake-up call, and probably at the end of the day, this might have been good for them. Yeah, I got I got faith in Sean Payton. Every week one of every season, there's always one – crazy upset that, that nobody sees and and this is it but uh you got to give uh fits uh play well he he played phenomenal he, he threw some of the prettiest deep balls that that, that you know usually come from uh rogers brady like uh i i know it's just one game and, and he also has the capability of uh putting throwing six picks this weekend that's uh that that's pretty much uh fits his story but uh, and also, there was uh, Breeze was leading a furious comeback, and uh, at forty-eight to forty, uh, if, if the Saints uh, made one stop, they would they would have got the, gave Drew a chance with two minutes left to get the ball back and a uh, chance to tie it up. It fits on third and eleven. He ran. ran. He, he scrambled for it. Yeah, he ran that's, for like fifteen I mean, yards and dusted that, the game. That's a microcosm of how bad of a day the Saints the, defense, had, the Saints right. defense had. But uh, yeah, yeah, there were, if they got the ball back, there was no way the Bucks were stopping them. I mean, definitely yep. not. The, yeah. What do you think? So, real, real quick. So the Bucks, Fitz Fitzpatrick has had these hot streaks in his career. If he can get hot for two or three games for them, and leave them at two and one, three and zero, oh, four and oh, four and zero, oh, for when Winston comes back, one. Do you? Yeah, I mean, they got the. Do you think they'll? They pull got the him? Eagles and this two, week. Do you think they can? They can be that surprise team that could sneak into the playoffs. Oh yeah, definitely. There, there's some talent there where it could, but I don't. I, I don't say. I think Jameis will come back no matter what. Because uh, who they got? They got Philly this week, and for week for week three, who do they got? They have Philadelphia, and then they have at Chicago. Oh, I'm sorry, Philly, and then Pittsburgh, and then at Chicago. Home yes. for Philly, home for Pittsburgh at Chicago. That's, I mean, that's brutal. Jesus, that's a rough one. They're, they're, they're glad they uh, they jumped on the Saints for that one because they're, they're looking at an 0-3, possible 0-4 burger right there. So that was a that was a big lift. Yeah, uh, I, I don't see them getting another one. And with with Fitz, uh, it'll be one or two when Jameis uh, comes back. I'm probably being a hater, but. It, well, while I wouldn't predict it, it wouldn't shock me if they win. If they the beat Steelers, yeah. no Philly, <laughs> oh, Philly I think they oh, can Philly. beat Philly at home. Yeah. Just yeah. be, and it's solely because of. Um, I'm not. I, I. I would. You know, gun to my head, I would pick Philly to win the game. Yeah. But with that yeah. offense, Philly has like with Foles. I mean, they're capable of just scoring like 13 points. You know, so even as good as their defense is, if uh, Fitzy can get to 17, he's got a shot to win the game. Yeah, well, well, like I said before, I, I have faith in Philly's defense that they're not going to give up 48 like the Saints. <laughs> I know that. I know that. The Eagles aren't scoring 40 either. The, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm sorry. I said we don't, I don't want to go heavy on the predictions, but here we are uh, playing Nostra Doofuses over here. But, uh, 
Hey, well, it's know, all good. The, the, the people, our loyal listeners, all three of them, <laughs> want to know what we think. They want to know what we think. These guys, these guys are on the edge of their seat. And gals, of course. Because I think right. Katie, the, gambling, my, my, my wife, is, is probably one state. of those three listeners. If gambling is legal in your state, bet the under on Dallas uh, Giants this week. Uh, <laughs> that, that's the one lock. <laughs> Speaking of the Giants. Again. I'm, I'm a reformed gambler, I'm, but uh, that, that's the one thing that jumps out at me. <laughs> Speaking of the Giants, uh, Jags uh, Giants. Oh, boy. Overall, the thrill I of mean, victory and the agony of defeat. I know the way that they lost the game sucked. They, to me, I don't think. I mean, I think even if he catches the punts, they they're, they don't have a snowball's chance in hell of oh, going no, all the yeah, way yeah, down no the field. There, there, there's no way. I wasn't. Uh, I'm not one of those fans that that chalks after one game. Uh, like you know, giant fans get on Twitter and they want to cut the uh, the the stupid uh, punt returner, or they want to blame uh, Eric Flowers, uh, who who is a big part of it. He's just a disaster on the, the left tackle. But there, there was a lot of little things that the, the Giants need to clean up. Eli missed uh, Beckham on a, a couple of possible TDs. And also, Ingram and Shepard had like some really debilitating drops. Uh, when, when you drop a, a, on a third and five or third and six, when you drop a pass, that's like a turnover. So uh, out, outside of uh, B- Barkley and Beckham, they, they need the other guys to step up. And Ingram and Shepard, not only did they have some br- drops, they also – there was a, a few like 50-50 balls where, where the guys they got to fight for that. They, they you know, got to give uh, got to give Eli a little help there. But the, but then again, he's not innocent. If he's going to get the the twenty dollar tab, twenty million dollar tab, he's got to he's got to make those. He's got to get the ball in the end zone at least once. But that, but this was a tough draw. Jacksonville is one of the best defenses in the league, if not the best. They got playmakers left and right. Even though, even like a, a, from a linebacker spot, Miles Jack and Telvin Smith, they. They had, they let Beckham get his eleven catches, but they, they didn't really they were they wrapped them up right after they didn't he didn't they didn't let him get much yak. So I was impressed with Jacksonville. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, and I was impressed with the Giants too, because Jacksonville came to play. This wasn't this wasn't the Jags not having a good game. I thought Jacksonville played well, and the Giants hung right with them. I think as a you know as a Giants fan, you should be encouraged with Beckham. Looked, yeah, I, Beckham I, looked healthy. Completely yes. healthy, which is really, really important. And, and and one big thing, I was I was impressed with uh, Shermer. Uh, out of all the uh, first year coaches, uh, I I, I uh, liked his play calling. Uh, he uh, he met, he did one horrible challenge, which uh, he's he's got to clean up on because because uh, we're spoiled because. Uh, Tom Coughlin back in the days was the, the master of the challenges. He was uh, he was almost perfect. So he he did one big challenge. That that's a big. Uh, that's a big key to to being a quality coach. Is there's no one uh, having having that guy in the booth g- giving you the, the the thumbs up and when, when to make a challenge. So, but but otherwise, uh, the, his play calling flow there there was uh, no problems and he kept the team in the game and uh, and and he kept the guys playing hard. So it was it was an encouraging debut for the HC. But when, when you when you get uh, close like that, you want to get that W. Especially you brought it up last week. Uh, uh, they got a murderous uh, the first seven games. So. Uh, we're hoping at best for uh, three and four, four and three in uh, Giant Nation. But I, I look at it and I see a, I see a two and five burger coming up, uh, if that. So Barkley we'll looked like the real deal, which is yeah. Uh, he he had a, he had a big home run and he had a nice uh, he had a nice uh, play on a screen, a nice eighteen yard on a screenplay. But uh, I want to see more consistency. I want to see more like uh, to, to compare it to baseball, more singles instead of the. Instead of being a home run hitter, I want to see more like Ezekiel Elliott type, moving more of the chains, more first rounds. Yeah, I mean, I think he's just going by one game. Yeah, I'm just going the, by one no, game. No, I mean, I mean, game. even I think if you look at his, like, look at just the way he plays, the way he's built, he kind of reminds me of. Um, he reminds me of Barry Sanders a little bit, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Who, but unfortunately, who, with Barry Sanders, you might get a negative one yard game, uh, right? Because there was, a, and also, also there was a couple plays that. On third and one, uh, third and two, fourth and one, he was a yard short. You would you'd just like to see him get that extra yard. So I, I'm not giving him uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not giving him fellatio yet. Although that was a, a dynamic run, and especially at that time of the game where the Giants just had the pick six, and uh, a lot of the, the fans were heading for the exit. He brought him right back in the game. He, he's he's got that 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 dynamic uh, type talent where he could just bring you right back in the game. And you got to so, think against. Against defenses that aren't Jacksonville, 
the sledding's oh, sure. going to be a li- the sledding's going to be a little bit easier on third and two and fourth and one. You, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I'm not being too critical, but I would, and also I would like to see more of the uh, of the screen pass, more of him in the pass game. He only caught two passes in it, and like I said, one of them was a a dynamic 18 yard play, which was which was like a highlight reel in itself. But I would like to see more that out of passing. But that goes back to the uh, brutal offensive line. Uh, thank you, uh, Nate Solder, the highest paid. Uh, <laughs> Offensive line contract in the league. Uh, put up a fart bomb on his uh, his debut, but it's only one game. But hopefully, it'll get better from there. Yeah, and I mean, I think Solder will be you know, solid. Flowers, yeah, yeah, flowers, he's, so- he's solid. Flowers, no, really it's a doesn't disaster. belong starting. Yeah, but you know, but but then again, that that shows that there's they they probably don't have a, even a decent backup, and it's not just the Giants. You see teams around the league when they lose. When they lose a starting offensive lineman, there's not just a guy you could pick up off the street that you could just put in there at that left tackle. That 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 that's the quality backups are are underrated. That that's a good and, segue. And more, it's a good segue, John, to our next game. Okay. Good. Bills. Bills. I had enough of the Giants. Bills. Ravens. <laughs> So, quality backups. Well, uh, you, the you, Bills, you, the you Bills lost. Star, the Bills lost quality. their starting line, offensive line, in the off season, which was a a big harbinger of. I know. I I think we we said. I don't know if everybody agreed, but basically, we you know the the consensus of our uh, the consensus opinion is before this week that they're one of the worst teams in the NFL. I felt like they are the worst team in the NFL. Um, I think there's not a lot of doubt now. They they are the worst team in the NFL, and it's a real like toxic, toxic mix for poor Josh Allen. Peterman is just so awful that they can't play him. Even though Allen, of all the rookie quarterbacks, should be a guy who's not playing. You know, just be, he's a guy. He's got all the tools, but he he needs to learn the game a little bit. And he's going to. And get also, to, you don't want to get him killed behind that brutal offensive line. I mean, they maybe had, they should think about bailing out Richie Incognito for, <laughs> for one last run. So they, they named start. They named Allen the starter, and it's it's solely because of how pitiful Peterman yeah, is. So yeah. bad. I mean, I could have gone out there and done what he did, right? And it's the second time it's happened, but. The Bills were so bad, I don't think the game really tells you anything about the Ravens. I mean, it's – they were playing yeah, – Peterman, Peterman gives you, gives you no chance. Uh, that's got to be debilitating as a, as a fan, when, especially coming off your first playoff uh, appearance in, uh, in whatever years. And uh, Peterman, yeah, yeah, I actually have no, have no, yeah, no, no shot with, with that offensive line and with, and with Peterman. And, and you want to save – and then you don't want to just throw Rosen out there, uh, Allen. I mean, you don't want to throw him out there and get him killed uh, in his first year and break any uh, sort of con- confidence he has. So they're, they're in a they're in a rough rough spot. Yeah, it's going to be a long year in Buffalo. It is. It is. Allen's starting this week, and he's probably going to get killed. Like, I can't say. But moving on. Um, so my the, the I thought the most impressive team of the of the week. Chiefs Chargers, Chiefs winning 38-28 on the road in San Diego. Um, I thought they looked great. Um, their defense is going to – they're, they're going to be a fun team to watch because their defense is they've, – they've lost a lot of the players on their defense, so their defense isn't that good. But Mahomes and Tyreek Hill looks like just a lethal, lethal, lethal combination. I mean, they, they were they were connecting. They showed good chemistry in the preseason, and it's really it carried over. And, I mean, Mahomes looks like the real deal, and Hill is just – I've never seen a guy like that. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of who to compare him to where he's just, like, that much faster than everybody else. <laughs> like, they just can't catch him. So it's, uh, you know, could be the start of big things in Kansas City. Yeah, and they didn't even need uh, Travis Kelsey, who only had, like, one catch. But – uh but their defense, though, looks looks pitiful. Uh, the, the Chargers dropped about uh, three or four uh, potential touchdowns, and th- th- that didn't help either. So the Kansas City uh, is going to be uh, a, a team you want to go on the over uh, every game. Uh. They play they play in Pittsburgh this week. That could be fifty to forty nine. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Though Pittsburgh's kind of had their number. We'll see if uh, if the trend continues or if. Uh, or, or, or if all the turmoil in Pittsburgh changes their things, because uh, the, the Steelers have really had their number. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Well, may, maybe the new quarterback. The kid looks, I mean, I like him. 
I like him. He's like oh. the he's like the anti Alex Smith. You can see why. And not not that I mean Alex Smith played very well. Not that there's anything wrong with Alex Smith, but you can see why Reed dealt him and wanted to get this kid on the field. I I mean he's yeah, got he's got has to have the biggest arm in the league. Yeah, how can you how can you not like him? Man? So so far everything everything looks like a win win for them. But they have to uh, shore up their defense. Up. Otherwise, they're gonna they're not gonna. They're not going to contend in that West. Yeah. Then a quick hit on the Broncos Seahawks. I think the game kind of went the way the way we expected it to go. Um, Russell Wilson kind of running for his life. Keenum, <laughs> a little good, a little bad with Keenum, but he did. He he's better than anyone yeah. they had last year. That was the surprising part, though, because because Keenum's not usually that reckless and uh, with with the three picks, so. He, He's got to show that up, but at least he made up for it with the uh, and and they have uh, they have a lot of nice uh, weapons, uh, Denver that uh, that people weren't uh, really hyping up. Uh, Lindsey, yeah, they, he's and, an uh, undrafted they're, they're, rookie. Yeah, so and, they have some under the radar weapons along with their uh, Demarius Thomas and, and Sanders. So yeah, and I mean the thing with Sanders and Thomas, I mean they've been weapons, and it's like they went from like Peyton made them better than they really were, right? And yeah. then they went from that to having, you know, like a Peter nope. Peterman type yeah. of guys back there. You Paxton know, Lynch and the Seaman. Yeah, Simeon, yeah. Who, who make these guys worse, look worse than what they are. I think, you know, Keenum's yeah. a good middle-of-the-road quarterback, and I think what you saw this week with Sanders and Thomas shows that they both still have it, and I think this is a good team. I think this, is a, this team's a force. No, and their, their defense actually was a little soft. They they, they had a little shaky game. Uh, they they kept Seattle in it, but and their defense is going to prove. When you got Von Miller, you, you're gonna you're gonna be a threat to to win any game. Oh, and it's not just him either, because I mean Chubb sure. and, and and others. And I mean, the Seahawks fought valiantly. I mean, they're, they're always in the game because of because of Wilson. He's that good. But like the one t- the the touchdown to Tyler Lockett was just a blown coverage. You know he's running by himself, fifty yards out there. You know that's the kind sure, of thing. Sure, and, uh, and the tight end uh, too. They they ignored that tight end. Disla was more of like a blocking guy, so they kind of ignored him. That was like a free game for right. for him. Redskins Cardinals, big Adrian Peterson revenge game. Um, take away from this, I think Alex Smith's going to be good. Going to be good for them. I think the Redskins are. a uh, you know they they look like a solid a solid bet for for eight and eight and uh, Peterson I don't know if he can keep it up but I mean the guy is a physical freak I mean to do what he you know not only he did that when he came back from the ACL injury in like seven months and then sp- <laughs> broke the rushing record and then uh, now this he's thirty three years old and he I mean he looked like a twenty five year old kid he played great. Yeah, the, the the big takeaway from this though is uh, first uh, first game coach for Wilkes, which was the second most horrendous debut of the uh, week. Which uh, we'll get to the most horrendous one later, but uh, he he did not have them guys ready to play to uh, to throw up to throw up a fart bomb like that uh, on your home uh, home versus a, a mediocre opponent like the Redskins. Uh, but the, but then again, maybe maybe we're wrong. Maybe the Redskins are better than we thought. But I don't think much of them. But. They, this team was not ready to play. Maybe the Johnson was a little rusty for for being out so long, but that that's not a good look for that coach. Uh, the, the way they came out there, I don't think much of Sam Bradford, even when he's healthy. Um, I, I said something about those. He's just a dink and dunk guy. I feel like it, I just don't think you know he, he's got he's got a little Tannehill to him, where I just don't think he's any good. And the, but to me. The faster Josh Rosen gets in there, the better for them. Yeah, but it's the same thing like with Allen, though. You don't want to put him in there too early behind a Swiss cheese offensive line. Yeah, I mean, the the Cardinals you, you aren't. Don't want to, they're not the You best. don't want to get them killed early. Yeah. That's a, it's not a bad situation for, for, a, for a kid having Larry Fitzgerald and Johnson. You know, those are two yeah. real premier guys. I mean, they scored six points in the six yeah, game in ki- garbage time. I don't want to kill Wilk uh, after one game, but there, there, there's a history of uh, of, of uh, defensive coordinators getting promoted and uh, just being clueless as a 
head coach and uh it, it looks like uh two guys uh are carrying on that that uh tradition uh, <laughs> as we'll get to another one who who, uh, who made wilk look like vince lombardi <laughs> uh cowboys panthers i think the big takeaway for me in this one was just how how bad the cowboys offense looked they're going to be a boring team to watch all year i thought the panthers didn't even play good like the panthers you know, played below, below, far below what they're capable of. And Dallas never even really seemed like a threat. They, 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 I'm fine with you getting rid of Des Bryant because he makes too much money, but you got to bring somebody else in who's, you know, Alan Hearns isn't the number one receiver in the NFL. So you have poor, you have Dak and Zeke and just nothing, nothing at all around them. And I think it's, I think it's a long year for the Cowboys. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to disagree a little. You gotta. I'm gonna have to. You got to put a little more on Dak because uh, I was watching uh, Cole Beasley was open all game and and a lot of times Dak was, was short. Uh, and Beasley got a bunch of catches, but uh, Prescott was uh, inaccurate on a lot, a lot of passes. So I'm not gonna put it all on uh, the lack of uh, receivers and Dez. And uh, but but that's the kind of game that Carolina plays though. They don't blow you out, but they don't blow anybody out. They keep kind of everybody in the game. But also on the on the other hand, they they stay in the games themselves, and and that game was misleading because they they was up sixteen nothing. If they hit that extra point, the, it's not even a game. They go up three scores, seventeen. So they missed that crucial extra point, and uh, that actually kept uh, Dallas in the game. And uh, and Dallas had two chances to at sixteen eight to to tie it up, but they did nothing. Uh, I, I have to I have to put a more on Dak. He's really regressed since his uh, first year. So once again, uh, you know, Cowboy Twitter and fans, they, they want to blame it on uh, lack of receivers. I'll, I'll blame it on one thing. But I, I don't think uh, that guy got enough of the uh, criticism there because uh, some of his passes, the, uh, I saw receivers getting open, and he was just inaccurate on, on his passes. But Yeah, I agree with that. Then again, quick judgment on one game. But, but also, I don't understand. And has anybody picked up Bailey? Bailey was, has been like one of the best kickers in the league the past five years. Yeah, I mean, he was – And they and they cut him and uh, – and then, then this guy, that, that was another big play this game. That the, the, um, the guy, yeah, the guy missed a field goal. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I guess the. Mar, the, like the Bill Dale. Mar, right? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, and I, I can't, I don't understand how nobody picked up Bailey. He's, to, to me, he's one of the, he's one of the best kickers. So. Didn't he, at the end of last year, didn't he have a bad second half where he shanked a bunch of field goals? Maybe he kind of, who knows? Who knows? Maybe he lost it, but. Yeah, either, either that or it's his last year, and uh, they have to pay him next year. So they, they got they got ahead of the curve early. But yeah, and I I, I don't disagree with you that Dak. I mean, Dak is never going to be Aaron Rodgers, you know, or guy. He's he is what he is. I mean, he's a guy he could he can use a good running game. I think he throws a pretty good deep ball. He he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He doesn't throw a lot of picks. Um. The thing I mentioned with the receivers is it's just like even with Beasley, right? I mean, everything's like within ten yards of the line of scrimmage, and they just don't have. Oh, any, sure, slot. Yeah, they sure don't have anybody receivers. to take the top off the defense. And Elliot, I mean, yeah. he, Elliot is great. I mean, he's a. You can yeah. make an argument he's the best back in football, and I mean, but you know, there's going to be nine guys in the box all season because they're they. They have, there's no reason to double cover. Yeah, we'll and, see. Uh, Gallup is their speed guy. We'll see if he uh, if he emerges. He he didn't really do much, but uh, yeah, he looked promising uh, in the preseason. And and also it, it, that's got to be a uh, uh, Jason Witten is just a huge loss. And I mean, any time a quarterback's been in trouble for the past 15 years, going back to Romo, you could just uh, rely on Witten to get open that's and true. get and move those chains for those first downs. So that's that's a huge loss, even huger than Dez, I, I think. Agreed. Agreed. All right, then Sunday night we had a, we had one for the ages. I don't know what we can say that everybody else <laughs> hasn't already said. Um, Aaron Rodgers goes down. Looked like, I mean, honestly, looked like a multiple week injury when it happened, and he was uh, on the golf cart. Kaiser came in, and you know, wow, it was like Cleveland. Uh, it was like <laughs> it was like Cleveland gotta- all over again. The Bears looked fantastic. The Bears looked phenomenal for the first for the first half of that game. Uh, I think I had talked about how you know, I, I thought they had potential to be this year's Rams, and that, I mean the offense looked good, Trubisky looked good, and Rodgers comes back in and 
It was a Khalil combination. Was a I think the Bears up, very much got like a little, and I, I'd i like to get your thoughts too, but the Bears, once they got up 20 nothing, had a bit of a deer in the headlights playing not to lose thing going on. And um, once once Rodgers started going downhill, rolling downhill, it was like it was like you could tell that the Bears – the Bears were tight, but he's incredible. I mean, he's absolutely incredible, and hats off to him. But I, I think there's better days ahead for the Bears. I hope this doesn't mentally destroy them. Oh no, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, obviously Khalil Mack was a great pickup, but but you nailed it right on the head. Rodgers and and Brady going back to the uh, the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Did they intimidate? They intimidate the other team's offense. Uh, like the other team our offense and play calling starts panicking because they're like, oh, we can't give the ball back to uh, to Aaron and we can't give the ball back to Brady, which which we saw in the, uh, of the with the, with the Falcons a little bit in that Super Bowl. So the, the, those are just those uh, iconic players where it, it even affects the the other team's offense. Uh, they had a chance to salt the game away at a uh, twenty to seventeen and they had to settle for a field goal. There was a big uh, third and one play and uh, the the coaches did, maybe they should have kept on the ground instead of running for the good. The coach. Uh, Maybe it's his first game. He got a little trick, tricky, and uh, he went for a pass, and it didn't connect. So, but there was a couple plays there. One time, Fuller had the uh, had an interception on Rodgers oh. right in his right, right in his chest. It, it that was right two plays numbers, before so. the two plays before right. the touchdown to Cobb. Yep. Yeah. So, the, so, so little things like that to clean up. But uh, you, you saw when Kaiser went in there. You, you you see like if Aaron go, goes down, the the Packers season is over. But but then again, you could pretty much say that about. 25 to 30 teams. Uh, who, who else do you think besides uh, the Saints with uh, Teddy Bridgewater? Uh, who, who else do you think, uh, and obviously like the Eagles, but who else do you think that their season isn't over if, the, if their quarterback goes down like that? Yeah, there, there, there's I very mean, few. There's, there is. There's very few. And it's more teams like, you know, the Ravens would be fine. It's teams, yeah, who, go, right. teams who don't have a great quarterback. The Jags might be okay. The, <laughs> the, um, but you know, uh, even like know. the Pats are Pats are a great up. team. But when Brady goes down, I mean, they're not going to win a Super Bowl with Brian Hoyer, you know. So the yeah, Steelers, if Kai, Roethlisberger Kai, goes down, they're done. Kaiser just uh, treats the ball like a hand grenade. I mean, come on, it's just. I, I you know I feel like he's got a lot of natural talent too. Like, and he just I don't know if it's between the years with him, but. It just hasn't worked. No, nah, he's throwing he's throwing in there too early, and that's an example of how you can ruin a guy. Like like last year, it's his first year as a rookie. Back in the days, a rookie would sit for three four years, and they throw him right in there and into that shit show with Cleveland, and uh, and that and that could ruin a guy. So yeah, it's... but yeah, so I think we'll get to it. But probably the highlight game of the week this week is um, Minnesota going to Green Bay. It's a great great matchup. Provided Rodgers can play. As of now, it looks like he's going to, but there's still some question there. And then, John, you've, you've alluded to this next one a, a couple of times, so I'll just say the score, and I'm going to let you, uh, let you give, your, give your critique. Uh, Jets 48, Lions 17 in Detroit, Monday Night Football. Okay, well, it, it, let, let's just say it was, a, it, was a, it was a competitive game at halftime and, and at the beginning and the third quarter, but... Obviously, uh, one coach uh, that was a little more experienced made some halftime adjustments, and I don't know what the the other coach told his team, uh, but the the second half was was quite different. There, I don't know what uh, your former defensive coordinator, Mister Patricia, told his team at halftime, but it, it didn't exactly uh, he it wasn't exactly a master motivator, and whatever it, whatever it was, as a matter, when you have the other team, the, the Jets uh, in the press were saying that they were calling out the. Uh, the Lions plays in, in in the second half. So if, if that happens on your first uh, game of coaching, that that's uh, not a good look. It's going to look like uh, some rough goings for Mr. Patricia. He, he might even lose a couple pounds. He, he might miss a couple meals from uh, <laughs> in the future. And you're even hearing rumblings out of Detroit that the veterans aren't happy with him already. That you know working him too hard at the or early in the off season. Yeah, uh, if you're going to be like Belichick, have the five rings first, and then you could act like an asshole. Uh, and, and, yeah, uh, <laughs> and I mean, you know, it's one of those hirings too, where they hired him before the Super Bowl, and I swear, by the time the Super Bowl ended, I think they maybe like would have taken it back if they could. <laughs> yeah. if they it's, could. it's it's only it's only one, yeah, because especially he had a little Me Too incident, which uh, accusations and. Uh, 
it, it's it, it's early, but it looks like uh, per, per, uh, being selfish. It looks like uh, thank God because he was the Giants' uh, first choice. Uh, Shermer actually wasn't their first choice. So. Oh yeah, hopefully, hopefully, I think I hopefully. Hopefully it turns out as good as uh, – because you remember back a few years ago, the Eagles' first choice was uh, Ben McAdoo, and uh, the, 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 Gi- the Giants rushed to get him, and then the Eagles uh, got stuck with Peterson. And look how that turned out. Now the guy's got a fucking statue in front of the stadium. <laughs> so yeah. it's always weird how that happens with the uh, the second choice. Uh, so, so sometimes the second choice is best. It's true. So but, it does look, it does look like it's going to be a bit of a dumpster fire in Detroit this year. Nah, based on one game, it's uh, you couldn't start any worse. But also, speaking of not starting any worse, uh, what do you think of uh, Mr. Darnold? Uh, I, I mean, uh, was that planned? Uh, it, it, he probably said, said, let me start my career off at rock bottom, and, and that way anything from there can go up. Because after that first pass, you know, it, it, things, things looked a little rough. But uh, it was it was just so impressive the, the way everybody on the sidelines, he's really got a good uh, core around him. With Josh McNown, who's a $10 million assistant coach slash quarterback coach slash backup quarterback. And uh, it seems like they they, uh, they got him in a good system uh, under uh, Jeremy Bates, who, who was out of the league for a few years. and uh, But he did have success in the past with Seattle. So, and it was a weird thing. He uh, got disenchanted and he, he left. A, he, went, he was out of the game for a few years and uh, went to some retreat in the mountains. And uh, he must have talked to Buddha or somebody and came back with the, as a guru. But they, but they really got a positive uh, – P- positive atmosphere around Darnold and everything coming out of him since since his first snap of preseason. It's just the Jet fans got to be pinching themselves uh, because usually there's doom and gloom around their team, but but uh, now you, the Jet fans are dreaming of uh, of Darnold hoisting Lombardi someday, and it's not uh, uh, it's not uh, a dumb dream. It's, uh, it's 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 pretty realistic. So oh, he's the real deal, and I mean, I think yeah. they're they're. they're I think that I think that this year was a throwaway season for them, honestly. And anything they get this year is gravy. But I mean, they're set up. I think he should have gone number one. I said it on draft day. Um, I, I think Mayfield could end up being decent, but I think there is a there is a good chance that it goes down as another Browns boner that they passed on this kid. And yeah. uh, and I hate to say it, but he, I mean, I know as good as Barkley looks. It's, nah, that's okay. It's, it's, it's tough with a, 30, yeah, that's... with a 37, 38-year-old quarterback to have this kid sit in there and not take him, especially when you're a team that doesn't pick that high. It's not like they suck, you know, the Giants, and they're not, they, don't, they don't pick that high that often. And to get you, you passed on somebody who could have led the franchise for the next 15 years. Yeah, right now it doesn't look too good. And get them in and, uh, and Giants take a lot of heat. But, uh, but also – as you've seen, you don't really have to suck. Like, uh, like, like when the Eagles got Wentz, they traded up, and, and the Jets uh, traded up to get Darnold. So, the, the, if the if a couple of hot quarterbacks come out in the next two years, and not all is lost, uh, I mean, the Giants can, can still uh, draft somebody next year, which which probably next year they'll probably need uh, an offensive lineman again. So, but in a couple of years, somebody hot coming out, and you don't necessarily have to be uh, two and fourteen to it's get true. a top pick. You, you you could be creative and trade up. Like I said, with the with the, the Eagles did and the, and the Jets did. Yep. So, that's not, not all was lost, but yeah, yeah. But that's just uh, playing another side. But right now, it, do, it, do, it doesn't look good. It looks like it was a uh, Giants let one get away. Last but not least, the uh, the most predictable game of the weekend. Uh, last game Monday night, ten twenty, Rams thirty three, Raiders thirteen. Um, it started. Hey, the, the score was. A- a little closer than uh, the score. It, it was uh, competitive for about three quarters. Yeah. No, the Raiders played pretty good at the beginning, and then Carr, I mean, Carr really cost them. That, that was a brutal – yeah, that, that interception was brutal. Yeah, that, 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 that really took the, took the wind out of their, their sails. But I was actually impressed, especially the, uh, the first half where Beast Mode was, was running right through – the, the vaunted, you know, the Rams are supposed to have the, this amazing uh, front four of all time with Donald and Sue and uh, and, and Lynch. That that touchdown was very impressive. So it, it was uh, the, the the Raiders played for Gruden, but but that that was just a brutal interception. Uh, you, you called it last week. That that call re- really has gone down, and, and that pass proved it. That 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 sucked the life out of out of the whole team in the stadium. That, inter- that, that interception. That was a killer. Awful. Uh, but and you got to remember, yeah, I mean, you talked about this earlier, but the Rams 
were the poster children. They didn't play anybody the whole preseason. Literally, did not play them. Yeah, not not even Driss. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, that first, you know, this game was almost like like a preseason game for them. But you could kind of see that it took them a little while to get rolling. But I think they're a good team and. I, I agree with you, and I, I, I say when I'm wrong. The Raiders came out and played hard for Gruden. They did, and his, and I thought his game. I thought his game plan. His game plan was better than what I thought it would be. Um, with that said, I just don't think he's got the horses this year. Ah, uh, you know, you're never going to get a game like that out of Cook again. Uh, he, he he kept the the Raiders in the game by himself. He had a monster game, but that, that that's probably going to be his uh, his highlight of the year. Agreed. All right, so we uh, those are our takeaways from uh, from week one. Now let's, you know, we're not going to go game by game in week two because nobody wants to listen to us talk for another hour. So we'll pick four or five, four or five highlight games to talk about. Um, first one, John, Minnesota Green Bay. I I just want to give a warning if you uh, take these predictions uh, for what they are. You could look at the official uh, PTBN standings. Uh, if you're uh, if you're in a state that has legal gambling, you might want to uh, call up uh, Roger's father, Cowboy Senior, uh, who, who's our uh, who, who's our leading expert at the moment. So this, these uh, predictions are just for fun. Uh, don't take them to the bank. Don't bet the mortgage. <laughs> yes, yes. Please don't bet anything based on based on what we're saying, <laughs> except the under in the Cowboys Giants game. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, but uh, Minnesota Green Bay. Even uh, even if Rodgers does play, I'm st- I'm still gonna uh, I'm, I'm I'm still gonna roll with the Vikings uh, on this one. Yeah, I think they're healthier uh, overall, not just the quarterback, and uh, and they're a little more ready for the the the, the season uh, coming out. I, I think overall Green Bay will, will take the division, but in this game, uh, I'm gonna look for the Vikings to get off to a two and zero. Real interesting game being being in Lambeau. If if Rodgers plays, I mean the Vikings have have some trouble, of course, in Lambeau. I, I, I you could see it going either way, but if it's a close game, so I think I think you get one of two things: either Minnesota wins by double digits, or if it's a close game, Green Bay is going to be with, with it's they're, they're tough to beat in close games because of because of Aaron. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'll take the Packers in a close one. Uh, other okay. highlight game of the weekend. Uh, Kansas City at Pittsburgh. I'm going to say the Steelers' uh, mojo on the on, on the Chiefs keeps going, and uh, I, I'm I'm not uh, impressed at all with the Chiefs' defense. And I, I think the Steelers are going to take it at home. This is another one that I think is it's very tough to call. Oh yeah, I mean, neither. I, I, you could see this game literally being like forty-five, forty-two, or something crazy like that. Probably won't happen, but the the potential is definitely is definitely there. Home Roethlisberger coming off that tie. I'm still gonna take Kansas City. I, I'm a I'm a okay. big I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer, and I know I know I know that kind of all the intangible stuff would point to Pittsburgh. They need to get a win. They're at home. But I real I really think Kansas City's coming out of the AFC, even with that shit defense. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just a believer when a team have, has has somebody's number, you just keep rolling with them until they break it. And, and the Steelers have really dominated the past few over the KC. It might be something where uh, Tomlin got got Reed's uh, playbook or something. Uh, I don't know. I don't they just need, seem to have. I don't have, need, have, I don't need have these the veiled on. these veiled shots about the Pats Giants Super Bowl. John, okay. Uh, I, don't know I know, what, I know, I know who's about. got whose number. Maybe, maybe okay? Tomlin is uh, is taping some of the Kansas City's practices. Now, if I said something like that, that would be a bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, New England at Jacksonville, another another big game. I'll go first here. I just you know, similar to uh, to your reasoning behind the Steelers. I'm gonna I'll take the Pats. Just. Until Jacksonville does it, I'm not going to believe that they can do it. I think if it was uh, if it was later in the season, I, I'd roll with you. But uh, I think this could, this going to be one of those early uh, earlier games where New England uh, comes up a little short. 
<laughs> very possible. Very possible. It's really an even game. I mean, that that defense is for real, and they showed in the playoffs that they can move the ball on the Pats. It looks like Fournette's probably going to play, which would be the big, you know, the the big X factor if he didn't. But yeah, could go either way. And then do two more. Carolina or at Atlanta? It's a very interesting game. I think ATL gets uh, gets in the win column. They they got they got the extra rest and they're gonna they're gonna be extra salty after that 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 bit of defeat. And, uh, and in these South games, uh, when in doubt, go with the home go with the home team. I know, I know. I'm gonna go against that. Wow. So, I think I think I, I think they're gonna real I think they're gonna really miss Jones and Neil on defense and I think Carolina goes in there and just, just like you said earlier, they know how to keep it close and they know that that's how they play and if there's one team that's not real good in close games, it's the Falcons. So Atlanta Atlanta, oh two. Oh and two. Nick and Chad Nick and Chad will not be sending you any Christmas cards. Well, you know, they um, you're, you're they brought it on themselves, John, with this with that performance. <laughs> Giants at Cowboys. Well, it wasn't horrendous. Uh, it wasn't an embarrassment to, to lose that close. It was just you know, the way that they lost little... that game was an embarrassment. Uh, I don't think so. It's just how many a... how many times can you be inside the ten yard line and not get a touchdown? Yeah, it happens. It happens to them a lot. <laughs> A lot of shade on the Falcons, then. <laughs> Giants, Cowboys. I'll let you go. I'm going to be picking the uh, the Cowboys. You picking the Cowboys? I was. Yes, I'm impressed with the Cowboys' uh, defense and uh, especially uh, Demarcus Lawrence in that front four uh, is impressive. And uh, if Sean Lee is healthy, uh, the, the, the Giants' offensive line woes are going to are going to hurt him again, unfortunately. Man, I, I, I didn't plan it like this, but I think we're going to be different in all five games. <laughs> Some, Someone's that's, having that's a bad great. week. The, um, uh, most likely, one somebody will go two and three, and uh, three and two will, will split the will split the difference. But uh, I didn't like what I saw. That's, from a, that's the, okay. I yeah, didn't like yeah, what I saw from the plans. Cowboys last week. I don't believe in their defense really at all, um, especially their defensive backs. I think oh, I, I think Beckham and Ingram, and to a lesser extent, Shepard. We'll uh, we'll eat them up. So, Giants. I hope I hope you're right. All right, so it's going to be a good week. So. Uh, John and I will be back next uh, next Tuesday or Wednesday. I think I think well, this format worked real good. Um, if one of our three listeners thinks we should do something different, you know how to get a hold of us. Just uh, just just let us know. We're happy to uh, we're happy to accommodate. But I don't know about you, John, but I sat down on on Thursday and I felt like I didn't get off the couch until uh, Monday night. Ate, ate a lot of ch- ate a lot of bad food, um, and just really enjoyed football. So it's great to have football back. Um, on sa- on Sunday, I had friggin' uh, uh, Chris Hansen gave me such a gave me such a chub uh, harder than any woman has ever given me in my life. Uh, seeing his beautiful face on the Red Zone Channel was he, uh, was a glorious did. sight. I love him. I love him. But he did. Uh, <laughs> he he had a couple of uh, a couple of missteps. It was early. He was a little rusty too. Yeah, I mean, he needed a preseason too. He he didn't play in the preseason. There's no red zone in the preseason. I know he said something along the lines. I think he said something along the lines of Pittsburgh was like going to run the clock out while the game was tied. That if they got a first down, the game was over. But yeah, yeah, nobody's perfect. I I, I couldn't do what he does. I give him a lot of credit. But I don't. I'm not going to go the, so far as to say he gave me a chub. But I I, I do enjoy the guy. To each his own. That's what makes us, uh, you know. What I eat don't make you shit. It's a good point. Yep, that's a that's a very interesting way of putting it, but I like it. All right, guys. So, John, thanks so much. Great time, and I uh, hope everybody enjoys the week of football. And we'll we'll talk to you in a few days. Go Pats. Always a pleasure, cowboy. Always, Always a, a pleasure. pleasure. My friend. Bye. Peace.